Hi, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. It's our Tuesday night live show, and I want to welcome you all to join me. If you're joining me on a later date, please subscribe to my YouTube and give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Also, think about joining me live on Tuesday nights. You can either watch me directly on my YouTube channel, or you can join me over on Google+. The easiest way to find the... Um, the links to my show is to actually join my group on Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul and I put the links there every single week and that's a great place for us to communicate so if you have a question about a product or there's a show idea that you have I'm always open to show ideas so think about joining my group on Facebook please called All Things Terry Sproul I do have Joe here tonight. He's going to put up the links for tonight's show. But if you're watching us at a later date, that's my blog right there. See it? Go ahead and stop by my blog, and all of the links for all of the products that I use are also on my blog the day after the show. So they're all there to help you out, and I really appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to take down the logo for starters, so that's not in our way. Let me get that out of the way. Boom. And then I'm going to switch cameras, and we're going to go ahead and get started and play in tonight. And tonight I'm, I'm doing something very organic tonight, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's kind of fun. So I'm switching cameras. Hey, oh. Terry, I'm having trouble commenting in the YouTube area, so I'll try to get it working so I can post the links. Okay, I appreciate that. Hopefully that won't be a problem all night. I also did put the um, links up, or the, the comment section up for YouTube. Um, the last couple of weeks I've had a few people ask questions and I've missed them. So I apologize for that right off the bat if I do miss them. What I'm doing while we're talking is we're going to use masking tape for our background. And this is really going to give a really unique um, background. Masking tape comes in multiple different sizes. So, um, you know, get some masking tape out and see what kind of background you can come up with. Um, back to the YouTube. I've had a couple people comment that they have um, are having problems commenting or whatever, and I'm not seeing the questions. If I don't see that your questions, I promise that I go back every single week and answer all of your questions. So just be a little patient with me, and you will get that question answered, even if I don't, if I manage to not do it live. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just doing some organic ripping of this um, masking tape, and I'm not even thinking. I'm just laying it down on my book here. And really, this is a really cool technique when you're done. You guys will be surprised how cool this looks. Of course, I got to a spot where my end is off. So, just doing, you know, I'm just ripping it into sections and laying it down, getting lots of layers on here. Now I am actually doing mine, as you see, kind of all up and down, but you really could go both ways um, and get a totally different look. So when you get a chance, play with this um, idea and see how it really does make a difference every time you put it on a different way. And you'll see more when I, uh, as we play along tonight. I got my tape stuck to each other here. That happens when I try to wrap a package, Terry. I end up with as much tape in balls that have gotten all stuck together as I do on the box. <laughs> totally it's relate. True, with that. really. <laughs> I can totally relate with that. Now I do actually want to cover my whole background, so I will try to do this as quickly as I can. But while we're doing this, we can um, chit chat about a few things. Um, one, Happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. I forget about that. Um, two next Tuesday, which is the 24th, is my birthday. So please make sure you go over and say happy birthday to me on my Facebook page. But I decided I'm not going to do a show because I've got a date. I've actually got two dates. One with the hubby and one with my best friend. Um, my best friend and I are going to go down and see um, Cinderella. I'm so excited about seeing Cinderella. When I was at Disneyland um, a couple weeks ago, they actually had a sneak peek of Cinderella in one of their theaters there. Oh, sorry to be off camera there. I think the only part, bad part about that sneak peek 
is I think it's going to completely ruin me for the actual movie because they did some of the coolest effects in this um, sneak peek they did. Like, it wasn't just the movie that was part of the show. It was the whole, the whole audience and the whole atmosphere around it. Like when the little mice were um, running across the screen. <laughs> this is funny. In the seat, there was little like little bumps, so when you were sitting down on the seat, you felt like there was little mice running underneath you. I swear, it was so funny. And you see all the people that, that giggled and laughed and jumped and <laughs> everything else that wasn't expecting the little mice. And they did, um, like when the, the fairy godmother came down, they did a little really cool effect there. So it was it was kind of cool. Like I said, I'm kind of I think I'm going to be lot or disappointed with the effects in the other movie theater <laughs> after seeing it there. I did when I came out of the um, show. I also went up to the people at Disney and said, "Now I want to see it here." I think they should do all of the shows there in the future, but I don't think they're going to. Oh well, <laughs> it's worth a try, right? There actually is a really cool Disney theater up in um, um, Hollywood area that does a lot of effects, but it's about a two and a half hour drive for me, maybe even three hours to get up to Hollywood, so I don't think I'm that interested in going up to Hollywood to uh, see this. So. Oh, oh, Susan finally got to two separate windows open so that she can ask questions. Yay, Susan! So, yeah, that's a really good idea. If you don't already do that, you can open two browser windows and have the um, Facebook, or excuse me, the Google Plus page up and the window of me up at the same time, and you can ask questions. So um, hopefully that will help. So I'm almost got done getting all this tape on here. I probably should have done a little of this pre to the game um, prior to the show, but I didn't. A couple other things. Um, me and Joe were actually considering doing some um, live shows that will actually have. Um, that will we'll have more projects, not just art journaling, and they will actually be paid, but we're not going to charge a whole lot of money. So kind of let me know if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, and if you'd be willing to pay for some of my classes, if they were a little more elaborate than just this. I was thinking about doing like altered books and, you know, some really elaborate techniques in the paid classes. And we keep it really, really inexpensive for you also. So give us and an you idea. you know I like upcycling and recycling, so I think that would be my focus. Yes. Joe does a lot of really cool stuff with um, stuff that he finds at the thrift store. With junk. I thought you were going to say with junk. <laughs> well, it is junk. Good junk. Happy junk. I got, I got some good junk, baby. I do. I'm <laughs> telling you. My, I've, you've been to my house and seen my junk. You do have lots of good junk, baby. So we already got rumors spreading about that, so why not? <laughs> we have, it sounds terrible, but we have a little half bath, a guest bathroom, that is so packed with thrift store finds, we now call it the ephemera bathroom. And yep. Terry, didn't you go, you went in there and just found stuff. And I, while I, I was sound asleep, she's making art with stuff from the bathroom. Yep. I had a blast in his house when uh, he wasn't at home. <laughs> I encouraged him to go to work every day just so I could play in his house. <laughs> it's like, go to work. I'd, I'd come home or get up and she'd be like, I found this. I used it. Is it okay? I'm thinking, I even own that? I wonder where you got that. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't mind that I used it or didn't have a plan for it. <laughs> no, what is that saying? Ephemera is like manure. It's no good unless you spread it around. That's right. Okay, so I'm almost done with my background here, I swear. <laughs> but And these uh, pieces that are hanging over the edges, I'm not going to worry about them. I'm going to take care of them and, um, later on. But let me get, make sure everything's down. I need to put another piece on that right there. It's sticking up and it's bothering me. So we're going to make it not stick up. 
I also have a kitty about ready to have kittens. Which some another of one? Yes. Well, same one. She got she pregnant. Be fixed. I know. She, I tried to get her fixed last time and found out she was pregnant and couldn't fix her. Well, they could, but I don't choose. I chose not to fix her until after she had this litter. Okay, so that looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. So basically, that's just tape. See how organic that looks already? With just tape. Okay. Now, I'm going to put some gesso over it. And that's just mainly kind of to get it all one color. More than anything else. Give it a little, seal that um, tape down also. So any pieces that are sticking up, it will seal it down and, you know, just make it a um, nice surface for me to play with. And I'm going to make all those um, pieces come out here in a minute. You guys will see that in a second. So I'm just using plain old gesso, nothing fancy. And this is my big pot of gesso, see? It's almost done, almost at the bottom. Getting really close to having to buy a new one. But I can't complain these. When I buy these big ones, I get these at uh, Dick Blick's. I think this lasts me probably a good, good year. So, to me, it's worth it. I'm going to be using some really cool products from US Art Quest tonight. And that's usartquest.com. So, if you guys could also do me a favor and like their page, I'd greatly appreciate it. And that's um, US, US Art Quest on Facebook. And also, I'm going to be using color products. And again, if you could like them, I'd appreciate that. Okay, so there's my background for my gesso. Now I need to dry that. Kelly asks, does this auto-refresh or do I need to do something? I believe... Um, it should auto fresh for you, Kelly. How do I see the chat? Another Kelly. Oh, uh, Kelly, uh, hopefully you can hear this. You are looking at this on YouTube. Um, I see you're in both rooms. So if you split the, the um, screen, you can watch both. But I am seeing your comments on both um, YouTube and on Google. Okay, this is almost dry. Okay, while that finishes up drying, I want to show you and share with you um, the product I'm going to use tonight is called Prills. Now, unfortunately, it does not have a very good label, so I can't really show you the label very well. But it's because the label's kind of translucent and the glass and the this is translucent, so it's not showing up really well on camera. But it does say Prills, P R I L L S. And what they are, and these are from US Art Quest is they are kind of an organic little ball. They're almost like seed beads, but they're not. See how they're all different sizes? Sorry about the blur. You know, Terry, they almost remind me of the Dots ice cream, except the Dots ice cream are all the same size. They do have that kind of look to them. And they come in lots of different colors. Some of them are, like this is a multiple color one. But you can get them in just plain colors, too. Like, uh, let me show you. This one is the red. See that? So those are all red. So this, think how cool those would be on your holly berries for Christmas. 
but they are very organic and very different. Okay. And, the, and it and it looks like a little, but it don't. I mean, they will last you forever in that little jar. Yeah, <laughs> a lot That's, of little prills in that little jar. Yeah, they really wear. So if you do, you know, if it's something you like to purchase, it's not going to be a waste of your money. You will have them for a really long time. So that's always a, a plus. Okay. Now the next thing I want to put on my page is some acrylic paint. Now I am going to use the silk acrylic glazes from um, Color Art, and that's ColorArt.com, and these are a glaze but I want to actually add a little more glazing liquid to them and we've talked about glazing liquid in the past now if I was not if I did not have the color art colors I would use acrylic paint and I would probably do 50 percent um, glaze glazing medium and 50 percent acrylic paint now since that does have a glazing liquid in it I am not going to use as much because they are they have glazing in it. So I'm just going to throw a little bit out on my um, Teflon sheet and just a tad of the glazing liquid. A few, few drops, that's all I'm putting in it. And then I'm going to mix that up. Now this is going to bring out all of these cool textures that I just put into our background. Make sure we're good and dry. Give it just a second more to dry there. One more quick go over. Okay, this is called, this color right here is called um, Autumn Leaf, right? Am I drawing a blank? Yes, Autumn Leaf. See, I questioned myself and I knew I was right. So I'm putting this on my whole background. And I probably should have made just a little more than I did. See, this earlier when I did this, I used too much, and now tonight I didn't get as much. Oh, well. I'd rather have too little and add more than have too much and don't know what to do with it. So, and waste the paint. I don't like wasting paint. I just posted a link to a Pinterest uh, pin that I put up. That's a project I did, but it really, really is a huge close up picture of prills. So they're a little hard to see on camera, but if you want to see them close up, check the comment stream for a Pinterest pin that is an African mask I made with prills. There's also mica and other stuff on there, but you can really see the prills really big. And Terry, I have a question from Susan. Do you use Radiant Rain Spray from Color Art? I do. I only have one or two of them right now. I actually just ordered more. So I will be using them in the future. What's nice about their particular one and why I want it is it's got mica in it, so they have more sparkle. Now what I'm going to do is let this set up for not very long, maybe 30 seconds, a minute, just letting it um, sit on that page. And I'm going to use baby wipes. And you definitely need a minimum of two baby wipes per color that you do here. So just get yourself out too because you will need them. That's probably long enough. I don't want it to necessarily dry, but I do want it to soak in just a little bit. So, that sh probably will be good. If not, you know, you can always add more color back in. So, I'm going to go in with my first baby wipe. And this one, I'm going to just take off a majority of the paint. But because it has paint on it, you're kind of putting it back on. So, that's why I want to go in with a second baby wipe that's clean now. And go in and take a little more off. Now, did you see what it did? Did you see how it picked up all of those cool um, cracks and everything that I have on that page? See how it's pulling those cracks in from the um, tape? Now, you do got to keep moving your baby wipe around till you get a clean spot, or you're just moving the paint back around. That one piece of tape doesn't want to stay up stay down or something like that. Oh, I love it. You see the texture that that gave? See it? Isn't that cool? It kind of reminds me of the woods in a way. 
So I'm going to go around with just a little more, a tiny bit, and pull out. A tiny bit more here. I want to go right around the edges and make them just a little darker. Not a whole lot. Just using up that leftover paint that happens to be on my craft sheet. And I think that's good. Now I want to do the exact same technique, but I'm going to do it with chill. But I need to make sure this, this layer is dry. Now it didn't take long for that to dry because I took most of the paint off, as you know. So I'm going to go in with, uh, grab the teal. This is also the um, uh, silks, and this is called Teal Zycon. Come on. Focus. Focus. Doesn't want to focus for me. Sorry, guys. Okay, so again, I'm just going to clean my brush out real quick. And put some of this teal, again, on my Teflon sheet. And add a few drops of the glazing liquid. Mix that together. and do the exact same thing that I just did. Putting those colors on again. Now, I kind of like the, my tape going up and down the way I did because to me it kind of reminds me of um, the forest. It kind of looks like it's a um, uh, almost like tree trunks in a way. Kind of has that look to me. Okay. Again, give that just a few seconds to dry up and do its thing. Grabbing my two baby wipes, because again, you're going to need two baby wipes. Do I like the... Um, yes, I actually do like the sprays. They, um, Like I said, they come... They have a mica in them, so they have more shimmer, and that's what's nice about the silks also. All of Color Art's products have mica in them, so they have a lot of um, shimmer to them. The, the mica hits the lights and um, shimmers very well. And if you like, actually, if you really like mica, U.S. Art Quest has a lot of really cool mica products. They have mica sheets that I've done some really cool stuff with and I will definitely do that if we decide to um, do that live event or the um, or the pay subscribers I will do a um, book with Micah and they also have... I love the Micah watercolors yes, the Micah watercolors are beautiful okay, so there's my background see the organicness of that and how cool those two colors look together so let's let that dry. Okay, that should be good. I'm going to be using two stamps from Impression Obsession. And that's iostamps.com, right, Joe? Did I remember that correctly? I think so. Yep, and they're in the chat window. Thank you. This particular one is one of my friends' stamps, and her name is Gail Green, so I want to give her a shout-out. This is her lilac stamp. And then this one is not one from her, but it's from the same company. So I'm going to use these two tonight. Now, the first thing, um, I have this plan that I do want these to go all the way across the bottom, but I want to put this in. So I want to show you how I would work this out. So I'm going to lay this stamp down on here and give myself an idea of how high this goes up on my page. 
sorry about that. I'm trying to pull out so you can see the whole thing. So that gives me an idea that that's going to sit about that high on my page. And because I want to stamp these on here first. So if I start my stamp right about here ish, I should be really good. Now I'm going to use Indian ink as I always do. So you can tell how much that's loved because look how dirty that ink pad is. That's a well loved ink pad. Um, this is actually from um, Stuart Superior. So what I am doing is I'm only actually inking the top part of the stamp. I'm not going to need those stems because they're not going to show. They're going to be behind that other stamp. So that's why I was trying to get an idea of where this is going to sit. You know, that's going to sit about there. So if I come in here and stamp right about there, that should work really well for me. Again, I buy all of my stamps um, unmounted, but I do have them cleaned. So there that is. So again, I didn't get the whole stem, which is fine because that's what I wanted. But I'm going to go in and do one more. I'm actually going to let this one lay off of the page. And that's a very good idea too. Um, when you do art journaling or canvas, make sure something's going off the page because in nature, nature doesn't have a stopping point. Nature goes on forever. So think of it when you're doing, you know, your your projects that you are working with nature. So again, I'm just going to continue this going across my page. I am working in the Cottonwood Arts Journal that I love and they do lie flat so I am working right across my seam there and see how nice that worked even though my seam's right there in the center. And I'm trying my best to not have these so level because in nature they wouldn't be level. I, I have the Twinkling H2Os also from um, Color Art, and I love Twinkling H2Os. I was a fan of their products way, way back when. Um, Leslie, the owner of the company, she can actually contribute when um, I used to go to CHA back in the day when it was HIA. The very first booth that I would run to, they were Lumi Art back then would be Lumi Art because I was a huge fan of Twinkling H2Os and I loved all their new products so I'd run over there to find out what the new colors of the Twinkling H2Os were this year. So there's, we're going already, look how beautiful that is. So now I'm going in with the lila, lab, excuse me, lavender stamp from Gail Green from the same company, Impression Obsession and I'm inking that up also. And I'm going to stamp across the bottom. See that? Isn't that cool? So that you can still see the flowers in the background, but yet we're getting new flowers on top. Poppies. Poppies. Ooh, poppies. <laughs> I love poppies. Poppies are so pretty. So again, I'm just continuing across my page with this one stamp. Oh, 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 hold on. Something fell without the lid did closed. Did you just have an avalanche? <laughs> I did just have an avalanche. It was my my glaze fell and it had the cap still open. <laughs> Not good, <laughs> but I caught it before it did too much damage. Actually, I wouldn't even care about the um. Uh, the, um, the the carpet. I more care about the fact that I'd lose the product. Susie D, how can I comment? 
you actually did comment, and I am reading it because you're over there on YouTube. You could either continue to comment there on YouTube, which is fine, or you can come over to the Google Plus page and comment there. But you're fine right where you are, Susie. Now, Terry, the links I'm posting, do they show up on YouTube or just Google Plus? They just show up on Google Plus, unfortunately. But I will, like I said, I will have all the links on my blog tomorrow. So you're not missing anything if you are over on YouTube. Okay, look at that already. Beautiful background going already. Okay. I've showed you guys already the fine liner. I used this a couple weeks ago. Um, you can find these at Dick Blicks. You can find them at Hobby Lobby. You can find them at uh, Michael's. They're in the art section. And they come empty. I don't have an empty one anymore. But they come empty. And you can add whatever you want to it. There is a fine tip and there is a standard tip. If I was going to tell you to buy one or the other, if you can only afford one, buy the standard tip and then add the fine tip to your collection later. Um, this particular one I have glue in, which is really great for those little tiny little things that you need to glue. But this one I have some acrylic paint and some um, um, matte medium uh, fluid in there. Okay, so what I'm planning on doing, and this is going to take a while, so I will not do the whole page because you guys will be bored watching me. Let me zoom in and see if I can get a really good view of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fine liner tip. I always start my fine liner off to the side here just to make sure I don't have any bubbles or anything going. So that's just a precaution so that I don't have any mistakes on my page. So what I'm going to do is touch these lavender where the purple would be on the lavender. Now with this technique that I'm going to do, you can only do a few at a time because the paint has to stay wet. Because what I'm going to do next is take the prills, the tiny little prills in purple, that really is a lavender color. I know it's kind of showing gray on there, but that really is a lavender color. And I'm going to ever so gently add them into the glue section and they will hold the, no, the glue, excuse me, the paint. The paint will act like a glue. Now I'm just going to continue doing this part of this page like this so you see what I'm doing. So I'm just dropping little dots of the paint and then I'm going in and adding the pearls on top. And the paint will catch the pearls and add the, and um, act as an adhesive for the pearls. And I'm not quite following the, um, the stamp exactly. I'm just kind of like dotting. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the reason, now, give you guys a hint, because um, I experimented on this before I came on the show. The very first time I did this, I used glue and only glue. I didn't have any paint in the glue. And what I seem to have found out is it kind of didn't it kind of didn't have a lot of depth to it because you'd see the black of the stamped image, but there was no color and you were only getting a little bit of the the pearls. With the paint, I seem to have gotten a better look. So that's why I went with the paint. So from my experience, I think the paint looks better than just plain old glue. But glue would work for the same idea if you wanted to glue down pearls in a different way. So, but the most important part is making sure that your, your paint is not dry when you add the pearls because there's nothing for it to stick to. And those prills roll, so make sure you have a way to capture them because you're going to want to put the ones that don't stick right back in that bottle. Yep. So you could have a piece of paper underneath your um, your work surface. You could have you know, lots of different ideas on how you could hold on to your pearls. That's why Probably I'm just... not a good activity to do with a cat on the table. Yeah. 
No. Or even a, um, a fan on. <laughs> so I'm only just going to do this one side of the piece, of the, the paper and the page, and then I will do the other side off camera. But you see where this looks like, how cool this looks already? You guys can see that. Hope it's, it actually looks pretty good. I'm hoping it looks as good on camera as it does in person. And remember, there's some down here because nature is in different sizes and different shapes. So make sure you get all your different little layers in. And even if you don't put prills on every single one of them, you still will get a really cool texture just by putting in the, um, the paint. And some of those little ones at the bottom, it probably would be better if I didn't put the pearls on them anyways. But these one up on top, that looks so cool. has lots of organicness to it. I'm actually going to use the ones that are sitting there on my page already. It's actually easier to take them out of the jar, though. <laughs> I can get my fingers on them easier. Now, I didn't actually have any dark purple pearls. Pearls, sorry. Um, so I had to use light ones. But I think it actually worked out to my benefit because with the dark paint and the lighter pearls on top, it really gives it more depth than if you had it just all one color. So, so see that how organic that looks already? Now I'm just going to real quickly put those all into the center and drop them right in back into my jar. And the rest will stick as the uh, paint dries. Now, I always clean my nib off with my finger to get all the extra paint off. And then the um, fine liner comes with this little, oh, sorry, off the camera. This little, the, the needle goes inside of the shaft of the fine liner. And that keeps it from ever clogging. Now I have the green. Um, I also have green paint in my another fine liner. Yes, I have multiples of them. <laughs> Again, I started off the side here just to make sure there's no bubbles. And I just want to do some just basic scratches on the bottom here. I want the grass to come through. And grass grows in all different sizes and shapes and different lines. and So I want nothing fancy in there. Just get some. And you don't even really need to squeeze your fine liner. It just kind of flows for you. Since I have it out, I'm going to go ahead and go all the way across. Again, not even really thinking, just putting some dashes and lines in there just to give the look of grass across the bottom. Very organic. Now, I actually could at this point, hold on, I'm putting my cap on. This is the hardest part, especially if you're blind. Um, I have some green pearls. Now, you can see in this one, See all the different sizes and the different colors? So this one is not a solid green. It's actually multiple colors. So just real quickly going across, letting it catch whatever it wants to. I'm not even going to guide it. Just let it catch where it wants, and the rest can stay. Just to give it some organicness. Okay. <clears throat> Put those lids on before I knock them over. And these, if I knocked over, I'd just let them sit on the ground. I wouldn't even try to clean those up. Okay. Now I have those beautiful poppies across the top that I need to paint. 
and I happen to have the brand new product from US um, from art from color art called radiant gels and this is a dimensional paint and again look at that color oh, I'm kind of getting a little bit of a there we go see the, the sheen and the shimmer in it so I'm going to use that to paint my poppies with Now this I probably could do the whole page because there isn't that many. Now this is in celebration of spring is Friday. Yay! I know a few of you have been really wanting to spring to show up soon because oh you poor people in Boston, oh my god, you guys had over a hundred inches of snow this year. That's just nuts! Now, Terry, what yeah. do you think of having stamped the poppies, do the paint job, and then do the lavender on top? Because I'm a sloppy painter. I could never go around that lavender. <laughs> yes. There's no way. There's no way because I can't. I'm my, well, I have the shakes. You know, Catherine, that part it's just like the shakes, and I can't do it. <laughs> and that, yes, that is a very good tip. Um, you absolutely could have painted the whole thing and then come back in and stamp the um, other images on top that would be fine absolutely and Susan would like to know what kind of glue do you have in your fine liner actually believe it or not I have PPA which is perfect paper adhesive from US Art Quest I did water it down just a tiny 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 bit and I'm saying a tiny tiny bit and I really mean a tiny bit um, I probably only put Okay, the bottom of my fine liner, I probably added about that much water to about right where my thumb is, and then the rest of it was glue. So just, and the only reason I added the water is because you guys seen how small that little nib is. I needed it to make sure that it flew, flew, flowed, flowed through that, um, you know, little nib. So that was the reason I watered it down just a tad. You could also use uh, fluid matte medium. Again, getting the fluid matte medium, not the matte medium gel that we use for adhesive on most of our pages. You'd want the fluid. But I actually have PPA in there from US ArtQuest. Just painting my pretty poppies. And this paint is translucent like the first um, coat, but if you do put multiple coats on, you get more of opaqueness to it. So it's kind of whatever you're looking for. Pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> um, when I was out at Joe's house last summer, or spring I should say, they have, we don't have cardinals out here in, San, in California. They don't even come west of the uh, Mississippi. And they're little cardinals. I know you guys are all going to laugh, but they say pretty, pretty, pretty when they chirp. And that's what it reminded me of when I just said that. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Okay. I'll put that lid on in a minute. I am actually going to go in and grab the gold. Radiant gels from Color Art also. I'm going to just clean my brush a little. I'm just going to grab a baby wipe because I happen to have it there. Just get a little of that color off. And I'm going to go in with the gold and just add a little gold to these too. Just to give it some little more of a shimmer. And because the paint's still wet and I'm adding the gold over it, I hope you guys can see that. It's kind of um, blending the two colors together. So you're getting a goldish red. See how pretty that is? So I'm just adding a little bit. And I posted a trivia question on Google Plus to see who's paying attention. So whose line is it in our trivia question on Google Plus? 
What, whose line is it? The quote is, and now my beauty is something with poison in it, I think. With poison in it, but attractive to the eye and soothing to the smell. Ha ha ha, poppies, poppies, poppies. We'll put oh, in. I remember that line. I know, I know, I know. But I'll, I'll no, stay quiet. No, you can't answer. Shh, quiet. I'll stay quiet. But I know, uh, I know. Daniela's paying attention, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yay, yes it was. Oh, I'm off camera. Okay, bonus points, Daniela. What year did it happen in? Ooh. Way before any of us were born. <laughs> That's an, actually an older movie than most people think. Look how pretty that is. Look at that. Yes, I still have pearls moving, but that's okay. They're, they'll dry. Okay. I think I want to go in with my fine liner in the green again. And just do something with these stems. So I'm just going in and just putting in those stems. And Danielle, I guess that year, right, too, 1939. Or she Googled it really fast, but I think she must be a Wizard of Oz master. If you are a Wizard of Oz fan, um, Sin City Stamps has Wizard of Oz stamps. I don't know if any of you guys know that, but they have two whole plates of stamps that are nothing but Wizard of Oz. And they are really cool. They also have Alice in Wonderland, if you're an Alice in Wonderland fan, which we all know I am so much a Wizard um, Alice in Wonderland fan. And Terry, I even have Wizard of Oz Riley the Moose stamps. Oh, how cool if is that? If you want to see the little moose dressed as the Wicked Witch, it's adorable. I'll post a link in the comments. Okay, I'm looking for a black pen right now because I need to do something. So, give me a second while I dish out a black pen. There it is. Because the reason I'm getting gravel in the black pen is because the poppies down here on the bottom, I didn't get as clean of a stamp as I would like. So I'm just going to color that in. I want it a little darker. Oh, also, while I'm doing this, um, we are doing a um, napkin swap again. So, again, you need to join my group called All Things Terry Sproul to be part of this napkin swap. And what we're going to do this time is a little different than we did last time, is you're going to send me one or two packages, brand new packages of beautiful um, napkins to my address and it is in the group you'll actually see it pinned to the top um, and a self-addressed stamped envelope if you send me 10 um, napkins I'm gonna send you back 10 different napkins so it's a great way to do some swap and get some really cool napkins okay I like that but I need a quote so give me a second find a quote I didn't grab one well, this is perfect. Memories, like flowers, make beautiful bouquets. Well, I think that's a perfect one for this page. Now, think, where is that stamp from, Terry? Because people are going to ask. Versus Rubber Stamps, and that's versusrubberstamps.com. Let's see if that... Come on. I put my hand in front of things because you read is that reading backwards to you guys? Upside down backwards. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Right there. <laughs> um the reason that I put my hand over things just for an FYI is because um the cameras are actually focused on flesh 
So it will focus on my hand quicker than it will focus on something else. So that's the reason that I do do that hand thing every once in a while if you're wondering. I just turned the book towards me because I want to ink this up and get a good stamp. I am also going to take my book and pull the cover, see the cover, let me see if you guys can see that cover, and flip it over to this back side, which is going to allow me to lay this even flatter to get a good stamp right there. Now, normally I don't buy rubber or wood stamps because they make it just a little more difficult to get a nice clean image when you are working in an art journal, but I'm just going to hope that it's going to work out well. Um, I find it, if you just get the um, cling only, you can get in there and press a little better and get a better image. So let's hope and pray that I get a good image. Ready? Oh, yay! I did good. Now, Barbara just posted in the chat room, no. I'm not sure no, Barbara, <laughs> Barbara what no we're, we're supposed to know about. So I need a little more detail if that's part of a question. Since um, we've got a couple questions going, I'm just going to just continue doing a couple more of these over here and see if you guys finish up your questions and then I'm actually done with my page for tonight, what I will show you guys, but I will finish it off air. Oh, and Susan posted a trivia question. At the end of the movie, what does it say on the side of the balloon? <gasps> Is that Barbara? Is that the answer? No, I don't know the answer to that. Oh my gosh, Susan! I have to go oh, find this it, I, I do. I know it. I know you it. You know the answer to this? I, yes, it says um, something state fair. Oh, Joe Morgan's in the background yelling something about the fair. Okay, now we don't know what that says. Oh my gosh, Susan! <sighs> You don't know I, how much I love games, Susan. This I, is, think it's, I think it's Kansas State Fair or something like that. It says State Fair. I know that much. <laughs> I know I know it says State Fair because if you remember the story, he comes from the State Fair. He gets lost um, while he's doing that. So I'm just continuing putting my paint down and the prills. Has the answer come up yet? Does anybody know? I'm curious if I'm right. Chris posted Kansas State Fair. Yay! I was right. Yay! And again, I will clean up all these prills and it'll look better, but God, look how cool that looks. I just love this look. I'm going to try to zoom in there really close and see if you guys can see those. Okay, let's see if it will clear up for us. Okay, Chris, are, are you sure that's the answer, Chris? I just checked on Google. I'm not sure. Oh, am I wrong too then, Joe? Damn, I thought I was close. Oh, let me zoom out again. I'm just continuing my little dots while we play our little game here. Well, Susan says Kansas State Fair, but I just posted a picture from the movie, and what I read, it says State Fair Omaha. Ah, okay. Oh, you're right. I do remember saying. No, that. I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm just looking at pictures from the movie. I think you're right, though. I think I kind of remember it saying Omaha now. But I do remember it saying the State Fair. It was in big letters. I remember that part. Oh, Joe Morgan has come to look at the picture. <laughs> He's like, i got to know. I know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Again, once my pearls dry, I will clean that up a little bit. Daniela, the wizard from the Wizard of Oz, our master of the Wizard of Oz, says, I think it is the Omaha State Fair, and she is right. But Chris is researching that. Oh, they're all fired up. <laughs> Maybe we need to add a trivia question to each week's show, Terry. That could be fun. That could be very fun. Okay, so I'm just putting my little... Uh... Gosh, we could do a Cards Against Humanity version, but we'd get in trouble, so I guess we can't. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is my page. Isn't that beautiful? I really like the way that turned out. 
See if I can get a little less glare on it for you. 75 people in your show are all now Googling. What does it say on the blue? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, too, because now we're going to get a big hit on, uh, on Wizard of Oz. I like my page. You guys like my page? So I am very happy. I think that looks very organic to me. Okay, I am going to switch cameras and say goodbye if there's no more questions. We had a, quite a few people in the um, room again. Thank you very much. I so appreciate it. Hopefully I'm not going to blind you. Yes, see, I blinded you. Too. I even said it, and I did it anyways. <sighs> we were blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. No, there we go. Well, you with your hands in the air, Terry, a rocker. I need to teach you how to be a rocker. That's not what a rocker does. Jazz hands. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old 70s, right? No, it's the push-up push up in the air thing. <laughs> oh, Lord. Thank God we didn't dance at the That's wedding. Thank God. <laughs> Oh, people like the idea of having a trivia act next um, every week, so we'll do that. But next week, next Tuesday, is my birthday, me, I am turning 29 again. Uh, Dan Daniela wants to know what you win. Daniela, if you get me your address, I will send you a prize. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, so next Tuesday, I am taking the day off because it is my birthday, and I'm having ready for this so you guys can do the math. I'll be honest. I'm having my 20th anniversary of my 29th birthday. <laughs> how about that? So, um, how much are the prills? Good question. Do you know that off the top of your head, Joe? I'd have well, to. Well, if you if you buy individual bottles, they're 3.99, but you can get little sets and everything. So, I just posted the link for the prills. You can see all the different assortments and how they work. Great. So hopefully that answers your question. Again, those are over at usartquest.com. All one word, usartquest.com. Um, so definitely please go like their page. Like the color art page for me. Color art is colorart.com. And it is color, C-O-L-O-U-R-A-R-T-E.com. Make sure I spelled it it's right. In the French, it's in the French way, color art in yeah, French. In the French word. So go like their page also for me. I greatly appreciate it. <gasps> Does this mean next time we go to, to Vegas, Terry, when we eat at my favorite restaurant connected to Paris, color art should pay? I think that would be appropriate, and we will speak French and eat steak, and we can have a bottle of paint on the table. I'm game. I'll let her know tomorrow. <laughs> so when are we going to Vegas, Joe? What's the name of that? I can't think of my restaurant name now. I can't with the best steak. Oh no. <laughs> Boucher's. It was. It's some weird French. It's a French name. I can't remember the name of it. Boucher's. No, that's not it. I can't think of it. Right sure, now. that's not it. Yeah. Okay, guys, I am going to let you go. And again, thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Join my group on Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul, and I'll see you on the 31st of March. 31st of March is the next <gasps> show. Mon well, ami Gabi. Mon ami Gabi. That was it. it. <laughs> and we will definitely have a trivia next time because that's kind of fun. So everybody have a great night, and thank you very much, and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye, guys. <laughs>